Over the course of a few short weeks, the tiny tadpole undergoes an extraordinary transformation, sprouting limbs, reconfiguring its entire body plan and developing complex structures like eyes and ears. And yet arguably the most remarkable aspect of this journey is that it happens entirely out of sight. Hi, it's me and this is Unmolding Science. Though we usually think of frog metamorphosis as a relatively quick process, the journey from egg to adult can take years to complete, depending on the species and environmental conditions, during which time the frog's life history unfolds underwater in stages. First, there are the eggs. Then, once they hatch, there are the blastulae, the gastrulae, the neurulae, and finally the tadpoles. In fact, even after tadpoles emerge, the developmental story continues with the development of larval structures like their gills and tails. Now, because early amphibian embryos develop outside of their bodies, they've evolved to move through their aquatic larval stage and metamorphose into terrestrial adults in just a few months. And though the overall story is fairly straightforward, the details of this process are still being uncovered. In recent decades, scientists have used frogs as muddle organisms to reconstruct the genetic and developmental pathways that drive these changes, revealing some surprising insights along the way. In order to understand how frogs metamorphose, it helps to know a bit about what they look like at different stages of their development. Frogs typically lay their eggs in water, often in clusters called spawn. These spherical eggs have a tough outer covering called a jelly coat that helps protect them from predators and physical damage. Inside, each egg is a smaller sphere of cells called the blastula. When it comes to animals, the blastula stage refers to a hollow ball of cells that forms a couple days after fertilization. As the cells inside the blastula divide, they also begin to take on different fates, meaning some will eventually become the brain, while others become the spinal cord and so on. Eventually, the blastula develops into a structure called the gastrula, which has three distinct layers of cells. The outermost layer will eventually form the skin and nervous system. The middle layer becomes the muscles and other internal organs. And the innermost layer, which is the one that's the most mysterious, gives rise to nearly everything else, including the digestive system. As the name implies, the next stage is the neural tube, which begins to form when the tissue called the neural plate folds inward and fuses to create a tube-like structure that eventually develops into the brain and spinal cord. From there, the embryo is basically just putting all of the pieces together. Limbs bud, eyes pop, tails emerge, and little mouths take shape. And at this point, you may start to recognize a familiar silhouette. But before the tiny frogold emerges, there are even more developments to come. First, internal organs need to shift positions. In the tadpole, the liver is located in the head region. But in adult frogs, it's in the shoulder region. So during metamorphosis, the liver literally detaches and migrates to its new spot. Additionally, the tadpole's tail is reshaped and reabsorbed. Some of those cells get put toward growing the hind limbs. And finally, the tadpole's gills disappear and are replaced by lungs. By the end of all this shuffling, the young frog has fully developed for limbs, lungs, and the ability to live on land. It sheds its tail, absorbs its gills, and is ready to hop off into the wild blue yonder. Although this entire process seems pretty straightforward, it's actually pretty complicated, involving thousands of genes and a flurry of developmental events that occur over a matter of months. But to really understand what's going on here, let's rewind to the beginning. Frogs, like all vertebrates, develop from a fertilized egg. In fact, the first moments of an organism's life often mirror the last moments of its ancestors' lives. That's because the proteins and structures that allow sperm and egg to meet and fuse were co-opted from ancient mobile organisms that were capable of independent movement. In other words, the ability to swim was a critical adaptation that allowed fish to reproduce on the seafloor. And this behavior got passed down to frogs and other tetrapods 
when they made the transition from water to land some 365 million years ago. And today, it's that same swimming motion that gets tadpoles from one end of the pond to the other, searching for food and avoiding becoming someone else's food. The tadpole stage is great for swimming, but it's not so great for walking. So, as frogs prepare to leave the water behind, they have to grow new structures like legs, and doing so requires some serious reconstruction. The animal's overall body plan needs to change from elongated and flat like a fish to more compact with fur appendages. The center of mass has to shift from the rear to the middle of the body. Gills need to be replaced by lungs, and the gut has to shorten since food will be less readily available on land. And though we know a lot about the general process of metamorphosis, researchers are still trying to figure out the details especially when it comes to understanding how the genetic program for metamorphosis is controlled. One promising area of research focuses on two types of thyroid hormones called T3 and T4, which appear to play an essential role in coordinating the timing of metamorphic events. In the past decade, researchers have uncovered several key players in this process, including a protein called FOX3, which appears to initiate metamorphosis by turning on the genes involved in limb development and deactivating genes associated with the tadpole body plan. Since then, other studies have identified several other genes that appear to work alongside FOX3, such as one called Effer for B, which researchers believe works with FOX3 to help coordinate limb development. Another gene called CYP6A1 encodes an enzyme that breaks down T3, which may help to turn off the metamorphic program once the transition is complete. And another gene called NNAT1 appears to regulate the production of enzymes that control tail resorption. Together, these genes demonstrate the incredible complexity of this process and reveal that frog development is controlled by a tightly linked genetic network that turns on and off in the right order. But although we're just starting to understand the genes involved in metamorphosis, we've known for a long time about the environmental factors that can influence the timing of this process. Decades of research have shown that temperature, food availability, and pond drying all play a role in determining how long it takes a tadpole to metamorphose. And more recently, researchers have begun to understand why. Basically, it's about the energy balance. Growing new body parts like limbs costs a lot of energy. But if there's a lot of food around, it doesn't cost as much. For example, one study published in 2019 demonstrated that tadpoles in ponds with lots of algae grew limbs faster than tadpoles in ponds with less algae. And a separate study published the same year found that tadpoles living in ephemeral ponds metamorphosed more quickly than tadpoles in permanent ponds because the ephemeral tadpoles had to hurry up and grow legs before their pond dried up. However, things haven't always been this way. Over the past century, global temperatures have risen and precipitation patterns have shifted, which may mean that frogs now have more opportunities to breed outside of their preferred habitats. As a result, some populations have experienced abnormal rates of metamorphosis. For instance, in the American bullfrog, populations in southern latitudes have started maturing at younger ages, which may be tied to earlier and more frequent breeding. As all of this research shows, the story of frog development is one that's constantly being rewritten as scientists uncover new details about the genetic networks, ecological pressures, and environmental factors that shape this process. Each new paper adds another piece to this incredible puzzle helping us better understand the evolutionary journey that allows these tiny creatures to transform from aquatic tadpoles into terrestrial or adults. So if you want to learn more about the amazing journeys happening just outside our own front doors, stay tuned for more from us. And as always, thank you for watching.